Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. Back in my college days, I took a summer job with a cable TV company to help cover tuition and other expenses. This was during a time when the housing market in the US was booming and new homes were being built at a dizzying pace. The cable company I worked for was swamped with new service requests and couldn't keep up with the demand. Their solution was to lay the cables above ground from the street to the house and promise homeowners that someone would come by later to bury them properly. Sometimes, later meant waiting as long as six months, which naturally left many homeowners unhappy. Our team was responsible for burying these cables. We were a small crew of three. Me, a college student looking to make some extra money, and two Hispanic men who had been doing this kind of work for a while. We worked well together, and each day was a new adventure in a different neighborhood. One particularly hot summer day, we arrived at a house to bury the cable. As usual, we started by ringing the doorbell to let the homeowner know we were there. No one answered, so we called the house number we had on file, but still got no response. Without any other contact information, we decided to go ahead and start our work. This was standard procedure since we often didn't get to speak to the homeowners directly. We were about halfway through burying the cable when a car suddenly pulled up and came to a screeching halt in front of the house. A woman jumped out of the car, looking visibly upset, and started yelling at our foreman. She was accusing him of trespassing and demanded to know what we were doing. It quickly became clear that she was making assumptions about my co-worker's immigration status, and she started to berate our foreman, asking him repeatedly if he understood her. I couldn't stand by and watch this unfold. I walked over to try and calm her down. Ma'am, I understand you. Can you please tell me what's going on? I asked politely. She demanded to speak to the person in charge, and I pointed her back to our foreman who was the one leading our team. This seemed to surprise her, as she had assumed he wasn't in charge. This was one of the first times I witnessed such blatant racism up close. It was jarring and unsettling. I had always appreciated Latino culture, having studied Spanish for years and enjoying the food, music, and overall vibrancy of the community. Seeing my co-workers treated so poorly was deeply offensive to me. We tried to explain who we were and showed her the work order from the cable company, clarifying that we were there to bury the cable as promised. However, she was having none of it. Don't you dare move. I'm calling the police, she said with a tone that brooked no argument. As she made her call, we contacted our supervisor at the cable company to inform them of the situation. We decided to take a break while we waited for the police to arrive. A short while later, a police officer showed up. I approached him and explained what we were doing, showing him the work order. He looked it over and then turned to the woman, asking if the address on the work order was correct. She snatched the paper from my hand, looked at it, and grudgingly confirmed that it was indeed her address. The officer then asked if it would be all right for us to finish the job. We offered to come back another time if it was inconvenient, trying to be as accommodating as possible. Just as we were discussing this, another car sped up the street and came to an abrupt halt. A man, presumably her husband, jumped out and started yelling as well. The officer had to step in to calm things down, explaining that we were contractors from the cable company and just doing our job. After some more back and forth, the homeowners reluctantly agreed to let us finish burying the cable, though they made it clear they would be watching us from inside their air-conditioned house. Sure enough, we could see them peeking through the windows as we got back to work. The police officer left, and we resumed our task, maintaining our professionalism despite the tension. There was one challenge. We had to go through a flower bed to bury the cable. This was before smartphones were common, so we couldn't take before and after pictures to document our work. We carefully dug up just enough space to bury the cable, making sure to replace all the wood chips and leave the area as undisturbed as possible. We took pride in our work and wanted to make sure we did a good job. As we were finishing up, a representative from the cable company arrived. The homeowner came out and immediately started pointing out what she claimed was irreparable damage to her lawn and flower bed. The rep took a look and noted that we had actually pulled some weeds in the process, which didn't seem to appease her. She grew even more agitated, demanding a discount on her cable service. The cable company representative was prepared for this. He showed her the contract, which clearly stated that the company would send out a contractor to bury the cable but did not specify an exact timeline. 
He explained that due to the housing boom and the high volume of new installations, there had been delays. He also pointed out that many of her neighbors still had their cables above ground, waiting to be buried. After we finished the job, the representative asked if there was anything else she needed. She snapped, just get them off my property. The rep waited for us to pack up our tools and then apologized for the homeowner's behavior. He mentioned that most people were actually happy to see us because they were tired of mowing around the unsightly cables in their yards. The rest of the day was a stark contrast to our earlier encounter. At other homes, people were friendly and grateful. They offered us cold drinks and even snacks, which made the rude treatment we had received earlier seem even more unreasonable. I hadn't thought about that particular incident in years, but it stuck with me. Finishing my education and moving on to a different career meant I didn't have to deal with such unpleasant encounters anymore. However, that experience reaffirmed my belief that everyone deserves respect, no matter what kind of work they do. Those who labor under the hot sun, ensuring that we can enjoy our comfortable, air-conditioned homes, deserve our gratitude and respect. I make it a point to always show them that respect and I hope I never forget this important lesson. If I ever do, I would deserve a good hard reminder to keep me grounded. It all started on a sunny Saturday afternoon. The park down the street was buzzing with life, kids laughing and running around, parents chatting on benches, and the occasional dog chasing after a frisbee. I thought it was perfect, a little slice of joy in our otherwise quiet neighborhood. But apparently, not everyone agreed. Karen, who lived a few houses down from me, had been grumbling about the park for a while. She was one of those people who always found something to complain about. If it wasn't the park, it was the noise from the kids playing or the cars parked along the street. But this time, she was on a mission. I remember the first time I saw her coming down my driveway with that determined look on her face, a clipboard in hand. She rang the bell and I opened the door, curious about what she wanted. Hi there, I'm Karen from down the street, she began as if I didn't already know. I'm starting a petition to have the park closed. It's just gotten too crowded, don't you think? All those people, all that noise, it's unbearable. I was taken aback. Sure, the park was busy, but that's what parks were for, right? I don't know, Karen. My kids love it there. It's the only place nearby where they can play safely. She gave me a look that said she had heard this all before. I understand, but think about it. All that traffic, the strangers coming into our neighborhood, it's not safe. Plus it's an eyesore. We could use that space for something more useful, like a community garden or more parking. I couldn't help but laugh a little. A community garden? Karen, no one in this neighborhood has the time to maintain a garden. And we already have plenty of parking. She pursed her lips, clearly not amused by my lack of enthusiasm. Well, I'm going door to door to get signatures. If we get enough, we can present it to the city council. Think about it. Here's some information, she said, thrusting a pamphlet into my hand before marching off to the next house. I stood there for a moment, watching her go, and then glanced at the pamphlet. It was filled with statistics about overcrowding and noise pollution, but it all seemed a bit overblown to me. I tossed it onto the kitchen counter and went back to my day. Over the next few days, Karen was relentless. I saw her knocking on doors, chatting with neighbors, and even stopping people on the street. Some seemed to agree with her but most looked as skeptical as I had. It wasn't long before the whole neighborhood was talking about it. One evening as I was taking out the trash, I ran into Tom, my next-door neighbor. Hey, did Karen come by your place with that petition? He asked, chuckling. Yeah, she did. I can't believe she wants to close the park. My kids would be devastated, I replied. Same here, Tom said. My wife had to practically shut the door in her face. She just wouldn't take no for an answer. We laughed about it, but deep down I was a bit worried. What if Karen actually managed to get enough signatures, could she really convince the city council to close the park? It seemed unlikely, but stranger things had happened. As the days went by, I started hearing more and more about Karen's petition. At the grocery store, in line at the coffee shop, even at the park itself. People were divided. Some thought she was right, that the park was too crowded and noisy. Others, like me, thought she was overreacting. One afternoon, I was at the park with my kids watching them play on the swings. Karen was there too, talking to a group of parents. I could see her pointing at the play structures, probably listing all the reasons why they should be torn down. I decided it was time to do something. That evening, I sat down at my computer and started drafting an email. I sent it to all the parents I knew in the neighborhood, asking them to come to the park on Saturday for a community meeting. If Karen could go door to door with her petition, then I could rally the community to save our park. 
Saturday came, and I was nervous. I didn't know how many people would show up, but I was hopeful. When I arrived at the park I was relieved to see a decent crowd. Parents, kids, even some of the older folks who liked to walk their dogs in the mornings. I climbed onto one of the picnic tables and called for everyone's attention. Thank you all for coming, I began, my voice a bit shaky. I know you've all heard about Karen's petition to close the park. I think we need to talk about it. There were murmurs of agreement, and I felt a bit more confident. This park is important to us. It's a place where our kids can play, where we can gather as a community. I understand that it can get crowded, but that's because people love it here. Closing it isn't the answer. One of the parents, Sarah, raised her hand. I agree. My kids love it here, and it's one of the few places where they can be active and meet other kids. We need to find a way to keep it open. Tom, my neighbor, spoke up next. Maybe we can come up with some ideas to address the concerns. More trash cans, maybe a schedule for different activities, things like that. We spent the next hour brainstorming and discussing. It felt good to see everyone coming together, working towards a common goal. By the end of the meeting we had a plan. We would start our own petition, this time to keep the park open. We would also present our ideas for improvements to the city council. Over the next week we worked tirelessly. We set up a table at the park, collecting signatures and handing out flyers. We went door to door, just like Karen had but with a different message. We talked to parents, kids and anyone who used the park. The response was overwhelmingly positive. Karen, of course, was not pleased. She confronted me one afternoon while I was manning the table at the park. I see you're trying to undermine my efforts, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. I'm not undermining anything, Karen. I'm just giving people a chance to voice their opinion. Just like you did, I replied calmly. She huffed and walked away, but I could see that she was worried. As the days went by, it became clear that more people were on our side. The park was a beloved part of our community, and no one wanted to see it go. Finally, the day of the city council meeting arrived. A group of us went to present our petition and our ideas. Karen was there too, of course, still determined to have her way. We each had a chance to speak, and I could see the council members listening intently. When it was my turn I took a deep breath and stepped up to the microphone. This park is more than just a patch of grass and some play structures. It's a place where our community comes together. It's where our children play and grow, where friendships are made. Yes, it gets crowded, but that's because it's loved. We have ideas to make it better, to address the concerns, but closing it is not the answer. There was a round of applause, and I felt a surge of hope. Karen had her turn, listing all her grievances, but it was clear that the council was leaning in our favor. In the end, they decided to keep the park open and work with us on the improvements. It was a victory for the community, a testament to what we could achieve when we came together. Karen wasn't happy, but she eventually accepted it, albeit grudgingly. The park remained a bustling, joyful place, and every time I saw the kids playing or families gathering, I felt proud of what we had accomplished. And so, life went on in our little neighborhood. The park stayed open, and it even got some new benches and more trash cans thanks to our efforts. It was a reminder that sometimes the voices of the many can outweigh the complaints of the few, and that felt pretty darn good. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe comment as well as share check out this other video if you haven't already